And as President Trump undergoes treatment at Walter Reed, Joe Biden is, is turning the diagnosis into what he believes is a lesson for voters. This is not a matter of politics. It's a bracing reminder to all of us that we have to take this virus seriously. It means wearing a mask in public and means encouraging others to do so as well. It means having masking mandates nationwide. Here to react to it, and Congressman Doug Collins. Congressman, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, I didn't hear anything different from Joe Biden there. It, to me, it seems like pretty consistent messaging that he's had throughout, um, it, with, the, with the one caveat that he's pulled down negative ads. Do you think what he's saying here about a national mask mandate will have any impact on voters, given that he said that before? No, I really don't. And, and let's let's be honest. He starts when you have to start out by saying this is not about politics. It's it's about politics. He's using a point to uh, make uh, against uh, what is going on right now. Look, he has been uh, hiding in the basement. He's been in a basement, and this is his choice. That's exactly what we need to understand here. Is he's chose to to do that and stay away from people. The president has been out leading, and the president has been taking precautions. As someone, you know, if you just go around, they've been doing uh, everything that they can, and the president still got it. What we're actually looking at here, though, is a reminder. As I was hearing. Earlier, Earlier in your show today is that we do as a country are going to get back out and as we get back out this virus is still here until we have a vaccine or it is gone it's going to be here we have to learn to deal with it responsibly wearing masks washing hands doing those things that we need to do but also uh, as a reminder that we can do that while still getting back out and running our country and the president is showing that yeah congressman the president has tried to strike that balance of saying you got to be responsible but i want to give you individual choice i believe we need to be opening up we need to respect businesses to make their own risk calculations and treat their customers responsibly how do we maintain that balance of attempting to reopen and not slide backwards uh reflexively and emotionally at this moment well, it's going to be real, you know, it's, it's going to be a possibility that people use this to say, no, we need to go back. But again, the president, one one, he's always led from the front. He's always been, he is our president, but he's also a, a man who is now going to deal with this and along with the first lady and others. But let's look at the way it's going around in the, in the different parts of the country. Here in Georgia, we're seeing and been open back up for a long time. And our numbers actually in my, in my hometown across our state are going down, consistently going down. And we're seeing uh, they've managed in a very responsible way. But what we've got to understand is, is, is there's also also a political cost, but not only a, also an emotional and a economic cost to this idea that you just shut down everything. Remember, shutting down everything will not get rid of this virus. It will slow the virus. It will still be there. But we got to make sure that we're taking into account responsible opening, but also responsible living, because our people and our economy have to have that as well, because that keeps us strong while we keep physically strong and also mentally and economically well as uh, to that point as well. Speaking of not shutting down, let's talk about the business of governance for a moment, Congressman. Uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying the, the Senate will move full steam ahead in their nomination process, their confirmation process for Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Um, in your estimation, this order of business, along with, by the way, a COVID-19 relief bill in the House, where are we on moving forward in the process of governance inside of Congress? Well, really, since the 116th Congress started, governance was always a second uh, thought to the Speaker Nancy Pelosi because she was more concerned about the November 3rd election. We didn't move any big packages. We could have been doing things for a long time that she just never got around to. And then when it came down to the point this past week of trying to find a relief package, working with the White House, she stuck to a number, an unrealistic number that really, frankly, added more to a political calculation than it did actually helping businesses and helping people. So, I, look, I, I think that's just, unfortunately, it's stuck right now. But I think the nomination of Amy Comey Barrett is something that can move forward. They can do it safely. They can do it. There's no reason that this should stop. And I believe that uh, Senator Graham will actually hold those hearings. We'll get it onto the floor. And it'll be voted on before the election. And I think you can do that. The problem I've always had with Congress right now is we viewed ourselves, especially Speaker Pelosi and others, have viewed ourselves as something other than a, an essential part of government and that, we can, that they can centralize control and leadership. The problem is we all needed to be there. We all needed to take a test, take precautions, but we could actually do our job. People need to see Congress in action, and they didn't see that, uh, especially from the leadership in the House over the last little bit. Yeah. A lot of businesses, a lot of people out there need help under government mandates to shut down. They can now use a government relief effort when it comes to COVID-19. Congressman, I hope you guys can move something forward. Thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All y'all take care. All right.